Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to begin our series of Children's Liturgy of the Word for the summer of 2024 right now. Um, the one that we've been doing at Mass, we've kind of stopped doing for now. We'll start that back up in the fall, but now I'll try to do a video each week to kind of help you with things. What we're going to do is start out just a little bit differently than I had in the past. What I'll start with is reintroducing to you Minnie, Father Matt, who's with us today to help with the vesting part of preparing for Mass. Vesting means putting on the clothing that Father would normally use when he's celebrating Mass for us. So let's start with realizing that there are different colors that we use based on the seasons that we're in. So we'll begin with these different items that I have here. We'll talk about what the items are in a minute, but let's look at the colors that we have. So let's start with this one, the green one. Green is a sign of growth and plant and things like that. And this is a color that we use in ordinary time. Ordinary time are those is that time between the special seasons that we celebrate in the church. Next, I'll go to the white vestment here. The white vestment we use for special feasts. And going to Mass, you may have seen this. We're just now out of the Easter season. And in the Easter season, we wore white, or sometimes gold will be used as well. We've got some different vestments that we use that are gold in color as well. So there's that, the white for special feasts. We have red. Red has a couple of different uses for us in that red is a sign of fire, isn't it? And when we have fire, it's the sign of the Holy Spirit. So we use red in special masses for the Holy Spirit. Those of you who went to Mass on Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost is the feast of the Holy Spirit coming down on Mary and the Apostles. And it was, and if you remember the gospel, it talked about a strong wind. And in the strong wind, flames of fire came to rest on their heads. And so we wear red for that. The other thing that is red is our blood, isn't it? Our blood is kind of red, and we use red to celebrate martyrs feast days. So when we celebrate a martyr, Father will, will wear red. And that's a sig significant sign that they shed their blood for the Holy Church. They wouldn't give up the religion because of any bad things that were happening to them. So they, we celebrate them by wearing red. We have purple. Purple is a, a kind of a sad or a penitential color, if you want to look at it that way. And there are two seasons where we wear the purple. We wear purple in Advent. That's the preparation period before Christmas, normally the first weeks of December, or maybe even the last week in November when that starts. This year it starts first week in December. So we wear purple. The other time when we wear purple is for Lent. Lent is that period of time that we prepare for Easter. So Lent and Advent, we wear this. We have one last one here. And remember, it's not going to be pink. It's called rose-colored. Rose. So we have the rose-colored vestments. We only wear them two Sundays out of the year. Only two. One is during Advent and one is during Lent the third Sunday of Advent, and the fourth Sunday of Lent, we wear the rose-colored vestments because it's a, it's a celebratory color. We're going, yay, Advent is almost over and Christmas is almost here. We get to uh, celebrate the birth of Jesus. And in Lent, fourth Sunday, we celebrate that Lent is almost over and we're going to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. So a special color that we wear. And we'll talk about these each week and vest Father put on these vestments, the clothing that he wears to celebrate Mass. So right now, we're in ordinary time. 
but we've had a series of feast days, and in particular, coming up this Sunday will be Trinity Sunday, the celebration of the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trinity means three, and you'll often see it represented by a triangle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so today we will celebrate, or this Sunday we will celebrate the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So remember, it's a spe remember it is a special feast. <laughs> exactly, we wear white. Good job. All right, so we've got this, first of all, this special part of his vesture, the vestments, that is called a stole, a stole. And a stole is worn by a priest like that, over his shoulders and hangs down in the front. If it was a deacon, the stole is worn this way. And this one's really not set up. The deacon stoles are designed so that we can wear them this way. But Father is a priest, so he wears his stole over both shoulders. That stole and the next vestment are the sign that he's a priest celebrating Mass. Okay, remember this one. This is called a chasuble, a chasuble. The chasuble is really not very fancy at all. It's just a big piece of cloth with a hole cut in it for his head. And that's all it is. It's a very simple vestment. Most of the ones that we use are very nicely decorated, though. These I kept a little bit plain so that I could work with them some. But this is a chasuble, and it goes right over his head. And very often you can see his stole, and you'll see his chasuble. We'll talk about the other vestments that Father wears at another time. I just wanted to get this one out of the way so we could talk about him again. So remember what we just talked about. We talked about the colors and the seasons of the church and why we use these colors, and we talked about what they are, the stole and the chasuble that Father wears to celebrate Mass. All right, we've done that. Let's take some time now and listen to the gospel that we'll hear for Trinity Sunday. Hey, before we start our gospel, I wanted to share with you two items that are in the church to pay attention to. The first item is this. It looks like a big table, doesn't it? Only in the church, because of its special place and the special things that happen here, this is an altar. When we read our Bibles, we find that altars were used for sacrifices. Sacrifice is an offering, something that's offered up to give glory to God. And in particular, our sacrifice is the sacrifice of the Holy Mass and we have Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, sacrificed on this altar. But it's also, it's not a sacrifice, or not just a sacrifice, it is a glorious feast, the wedding feast of the Lamb. So it's a wonderful thing that happens here on the altar. Okay, so just a real quick and simple look at that, the altar, and then we'll look at another one in just a second. Okay, so here I am where we read sacred scripture. Sacred scripture is the Bible. So we have sacred scripture that we read at every Mass, sometimes three readings, and, and occasionally there's even more than that. But for, for the most part on Sundays, we do three different readings, plus some psalms that are there. The one that the deacon or the priest reads is called the Holy Gospel. Gospel means good news. And Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus, the stories of what he did in the world, and the lessons that he had captured, written down, so that we could learn them. So we're standing at the Ambo. The Ambo is a place where we read the Word of God, and I'm reading from the book of the Gospels. So if you remember at Mass, what will happen if you watch Father and the Deacon, the Deacon will... Uh, the, the organist or the musician will play the Alleluia verse. And the deacon will come to the priest and he will ask for a blessing. The 
Father will give the deacon the blessing, and the deacon will carry the book of the Gospels from the altar, which we just saw, and bring it over here to the ambo, where we are now. When the Alleluia verse is done, then we begin our reading. Now, so let's see if you remember the responses for the reading of the Gospel. The deacon will fold his hands and say, The Lord be with you. And you say, and with your spirit. Good. Say it loudly and clearly when, when that happens. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. So this year we're reading from Matthew. Other years we read from John and we read from John again. So two different Johns and then today is Matthew. And notice what I did. I made the sign of the cross over the reading. The next thing that I will do is I will come up and I will make a sign of the cross on my forehead, on my lips, and over my heart. Forehead, lips, and heart. And there's a little prayer that goes with that. And this is the prayer. And we'll learn this because we're going to repeat it over and over again through the summer. May the message of this holy gospel be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. So we're asking for God to open us up and allow us to hear what he has to say and to use it in our lives to make things better in our world. So let's begin. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And you say, glory to you, O Lord. And then we do the signing of our forehead, lips, and heart with the little prayer. Excellent. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all, when they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. And you say, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, and the deacon or the priest will kiss the gospel then. Once the gospel is over, then we begin what's called the homily. Father or the deacon will talk to us about the readings that we just heard, whether it's the gospel or one of the other readings that depends on the day. But today we're, we will look at this gospel. First of all, that opening line says that 11 disciples. There are only 11? No, there were 12, weren't they? Why is there, are there only 11 now? So this is after Jesus was crucified, died, and rose from the dead. He came back to continue and finish the teaching for his apostles. Now there were only 12 of them, or only 11 of them in this one, because remember, Judas is no longer with us. Judas was the one who betrayed Jesus, and he's gone now. And they haven't yet chosen his successor, so there are 11. So they went to the mountain where Jesus had ordered them, and Jesus often went to a mountain to pray. I thought that's kind of neat. He can go and be alone. He's closer to God because he's up on the mountain, right? But he's closer to God because he's in prayer. And then he says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is God, isn't he? So he has all power in heaven and on earth. And then he gives the disciples, the apostles, a mission to baptize all nations. Baptism is an important sacrament that all of us receive before we receive the other sacraments. It's the opening sacrament, the one that brings us into the church. That's a whole, probably a whole video I could talk about on baptism alone and how important that is. 
But you, the key thing is, is we were talking about Trinity Sunday today, right? And how do we baptize? We baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. One God, but there are three distinct persons in God. And if you've ever seen a baptism, you know that the priest or the deacon, or if, maybe even the bishop, takes water and pours it on the forehead of the child or the person being baptized and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As a deacon, I always find this very powerful because I'm saying the words that in this Gospel of Matthew that Jesus told me to say when I baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're claiming souls for Christ and making that whole. So what I would like you to think about today is you were baptized. You were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So everywhere you go, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are with you, are part of you. They make you strong. They make you able to make good decisions. Someday, you'll be confirmed. And when you're confirmed, the power of the Holy Spirit will be strengthened within you so that you're even more powerful and more able to do those things that we're called to do as baptized people. Making disciples of all nations. Teaching people about Jesus. And sometimes it's just because of the way we live our lives and the way we treat other people. So, there's our... Children's Liturgy of the Word for the Sunday or the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Again, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And I will see you next week.